games, brains, and headbanger life here. We're here with another tier list, and as part of our immense Hellraiser coverage that we currently have going mm. across several videos, including a very lengthy in-depth of the series as a whole, we thought we would rank the Cenobites mm. in a tier list ranking. Now, this was an idea I first got when we first watched the first couple of mm. movies, and by the end, I was like, actually, maybe that's not possible because maybe there just aren't enough of them. Yeah. Or at least ones that stand out. While that is true to a degree, I ended up finding 25 individual is... Cenobites. <laughs> there is a little bit of cheating. There are three variations of Pinhead. Oh, okay. But, you know, it's three variations of Pinhead. What yeah. are you going to do? Yeah. So, 25 Cenobites spread across 10 movies. <laughs> some you'd go into instantly recognize. Yeah. Some you're probably going to go, wait. What film was he in? Mm. And to uh, be honest, I can't quite remember some of them myself, but we'll go from that and we will kick off. Would I think one of the more iconic ones that you really do remember once she pops up, and mm. it's Angelique. Now, Angelique is in Hellraiser, the one that's set in the past and the future. Hellraiser, not, what is that one called? Oh. Uh, not Revelations, Hellraiser, <laughs> fuck. After three, Hellraiser... What is it oh, called? Oh my God. It's bloodlines. bloodlines. It is Bloodline. Nice. Hellraiser of Bloodline. Yeah. There we go. Uh, she's actually like a demon of hell who is called up in that movie. She takes the form of a woman for the most part, but mm. halfway through that film, spoiler, she gets sent back to hell along with Pinhead mm. and then becomes part of the order and all that. So ends up coming back looking like this, as you can see in that picture. Mm. She's got... An interesting look, a bit of a dominatrix mm. thing, but the exposed skull with it's the chains cool. from there to the arms and so on. I think she's quite uh, iconic looking, mm. if I'm honest. Stands out, doesn't it? It does. When I think, when I hear Angelique, I think mm. I know what she looks like. I know what she. Mm. I can picture the centre by my head. And I'd, I'd associate that with the pin, with the Hellraiser film because obviously it's all focused mainly around like so. Pinhead is pin in his head. Yep. Whereas that is a brain open. So I. Automatically associated with the film. There's a nice touch as well. Is it's it's she goes by the name Angelique, uh, because of that's her character when she's the pretending to be a human mm. kind of thing. So it's kind of nice to get a less dare I say ha hammering the point home. You know, mm. Hellraiser villain Cenobite. You know, there's a couple of ones that are named mainly for what they look like more mm. than anything else. You know, Pinhead wasn't called Pinhead no. in the first one. It was the name that was given to him later, really. Mm. And it's such a on the nose. Like, mm, name, you know, it's not that clever. No. Whereas Angelique is. So the question is, where do we put this? So our rankings are such sites, mm. which is the top cool. ranking. Second is pleasure. The third is satisfaction. Mm -hmm. The fourth is, is that it? Yeah. And the fifth and the final being pain. So obviously based on the Hellraiser mm. thing. So I think it's a good start. I'm happy enough, considering there's going to be a lot of trash in this, I'm happy enough to put this in the very top such sites. Yeah. Because it's so it looks interesting good. looking. Yeah. Right. Bound and Bound 2. These are two separate ones, given the name of Bound. Mm. So we'll start with Bound 1 first. Um, and basically, Bound is a man who looks like he's had uh, material... He's over his eyes, over his mouth and all that, but yeah. pulled so tight that it's ripped into his skin. Right. I cannot remember which film Bound turns up. I know Bound mm. 2 turns up in Hellraiser, the latest one. Yeah. Hellraiser Judgment. But Bound 1, yeah, I'm, trying to I'm not sure about. No. I think it might be Hellseeker, but I can't be sure about that. But mm. I'm putting them together and we're going to do them both at the same time because they're basically the same character, mm. but just different versions of them, Bound 1 and Bound and two. 2. Yeah. Um, the fact that I can't remember where they look... Where, well, here's the thing, right? I think the look's pretty cool. I think yeah, it's a like simple, idea it. simple mm. idea. And the black leather and all that, it's just like a, almost like a, a goon of a Ceno, the Cenobite sort of thing, you know? Yeah, and it goes with the whole theme of pleasure and pain, because obviously bound, a lot of that could involve tying people up. Absolutely. So it's gone a bit, it's gone into the other realms of it. So yeah, I do think it fits in with Cenobite MO. But when you look at the two pictures we've got there, I think it's bound two yeah. that stands out more. Looks a lot darker. So I would put bound one in, is that it? And bound two in satisfaction. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just going to go with me. What I want. <laughs> so that's bound one and bound two. Mm -hmm. Right. To an individual then, often called Butterball. Mm. So this guy, first and the second films mm. only. Uh, Hellraiser 1 and Hellraiser 2. Mm. It's effectively the fat Cenobite, mm. which uh, was nicknamed Butterball. It's kind of gross looking, quite, you know, it's fat. Got these weird like smoked black glasses, mm. goggles kind of thing. I think he's quite iconic in there. He's iconic yeah. because he's part of the original crew, but I think he's terrible mm. because 
What does he do? He, he says he talks in the first. He? He's got like a. Does oh, he? I think I'm sure. Didn't he say? I'm sure he says something. He's doesn't like say a thing. thing. Oh, what am I thinking of? No, what? the only ones that really talk are um, Pinhead mm. and the female Cenobite. Yeah. That's it. And Chatterer does tea things. He just sort of stands there and he dies like a chump in the second one. Oh, why am I thinking he was? In the first one, he dies like kind of like well, not like dies a chump, but like he approaches Kirsty from behind when the house is collapsing, and then part of the roof falls on him. Yeah. Like ooh. Scary. I don't know just the way he looks. Maybe because I'm oh, picturing it, him talking. Yeah. I mean, the yeah. thing is, it is a good look. So, where would you put him? Mm. I'd go above bound two. Bound one, sorry. In satisfaction? Yeah. yeah. That's bound two? Yeah. That's bound two, That's yeah. bound two? Yeah. I thought that was bound... No, nope, bound two is the one there. Bound one. Bound is the one. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> Get it right. Yeah. Oh. Right. This one. <laughs> Camera head oh, from Hellraiser 3, yeah. Hell on Earth. This is a doc that is then transformed into a Cenobite. Mm. And basically, because he's a cameraman, his camera is put into his head. Mm. It can apparently shoot. Uh, and he says a lot of bad puns. No. I hate Hellraiser 3. It's one yeah. of the worst ones for me. And part of the reason why I hate it so much is it's Cenobites. Yep. And when Doc, when we were watching it, I said to you, man, you have no idea how bad this is going to get. And like, he, he shoots, what's he shoots? Um, he shoots whatever, so explosive out of his, the camera head. She dodges it and then he's like, that's a wrap. Oh. You know, or are yes. you ready for your close up? You know, and stuff like that. That alone there so is bad. just like pun spitting. Yeah. Cenobite. It's so tacky. It's terrible. Well. Yeah. Thing is, it doesn't even look that good. Yeah. It doesn't look that good either. To me, this is in the worst pain. Definitely. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. Sticking with Hellraiser three, it is another one of the unimaginative one. What has been called CD head. Mm. So uh, this is the DJ, I believe, from the club uh, yeah. that uh, Pinhead attacks, and um, he dies. The human version of him dies when like CDs float in the air mm. and then jam into his head. And this is, this is the film that they, they become like, sort of parts become like zombies almost. So like, yeah, they got attacked by the by pinhead. However they died, it seemed like that's how that's they became. A, yeah. yeah. And, like, and that's never been the case No, <laughs> no, not that. at all. So they really lost the plot on that one. But this guy yeah. looks stupid. Um, yeah. He loads CDs from his mouth and shoots them out. Uh, mm. His actual look looks like he's wearing a crap gink mask and he's got a couple of CDs embedded in his head. Pain. To me, this is pain. Yeah. And uh, But I, a head of Doc yeah. or camera head purely because... He doesn't say anything. Yeah. Yep. No, no <laughs> that's that's a, yeah. no puns. All right. Now we've got uh, one of the many variations we have on Chatterer. Mm. So this is from Bloodline again. Mm. Bloodline. Uh, and it's the Chatterer Beast. It's the dog version that's apparently created from two human beings. Mm. So it's a, it's a cool looking beast. It mm. looks pretty cool. It's got the whole Chatterer jaw. Mm. Um, yeah. There's not a lot to say about this because it's only briefly in as it chases yeah. someone down a hallway. Um, but it does look pretty fucking yeah. cool. It is, I think it was, at least, I think it was an animatronic, at least, or a puppet. So give it's not CG that. for that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, and it, it's just kind of nice to see. At this point, it was nice to see a variation on a Cenobite mm. that was more beast-like. Yeah. So for me... Mm, satisfaction. Satisfaction, yeah, bottom, a bit different. bottom yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah, because I think Bound 2 looks cool enough to be mm. keeping his place. And another version of the Chatterer. Uh, this, I believe, is from a Hellworld. Mm. And it's the Chatterer Torso. No, it's not Hellworld. It's the one with the, the corrupt cop. Not Deader, the other one. Uh, this is the problem with the Hellraiser yeah, franchise. Yeah. And it, you know? um, but yeah, anyway, it's a Chatterer Torso that I think he sees in a tree or something like that. And it's mm. half... It's the Chatterer, basically, yeah. but just half the body. Yeah. Um, it's, bre it's in a shot during a vision. There's yeah. nothing else really to it. And it doesn't really... I don't think it... Seems like a Cenobite as much as the others. Agreed. Me. Agreed. Uh, the colouring. There tends to be like, it's a theme. If you look at the pictures, there's a theme of the coloration of the Cenobites. Like there's no blood, there's no blood going to them. They're all white and dead looking. Well, he's got no leather on either. That's obviously mm. a kind of a, a, an important yeah, aspect. Yeah, yeah. There's no kind of like tying into that pleasure pain thing. So yeah, I'd... I'd well, where mm. would you put it? Yeah, it's still quite horrible looking. So mm. I'd go, I'd go for is that it? Yep. Bottom of it, is that it? That's exactly what yeah. I was thinking. Mm. I think bound one is uh, more impressive looking. Mm. But now we come to the man himself, the infamous Chatterer, mm. uh, so famous in the fact that every film has tried to have some variation in mm. some regard to it, including 
the original actor would reprise his role mm. in the latest Hellraiser, Hellraiser Judgment. But obviously everybody knows his character. They expose skin what looks quite burnt, mm. exposed around the mouth and the teeth that consistent, consistently ch- 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 chatter. Um, for me, this is... Thing is, the only thing is like about it is that again he's useless. I find him quite mm. useless. So for me, it's pleasure. Yeah. Not the top ranking one. Yeah. If that makes sense. He's just like, oh, there he is again. Like, oh, it's comforting. The such sites one should always be it should be full of ones that make an impact on the story. Yeah. yeah. So, but I'm happy enough to put him in pleasure. Definitely. Yeah. Then we come to Doctor Shenard. <laughs> Donna Chanel is obviously the villain of of Hellraiser 2 or Hellbound Hellraiser 2. Mm-hmm. He's actually a normal doctor to begin with. He gets betrayed by Julia when they're inside the labyrinth mm-hmm. and he gets transformed into a Weird. beast. Yeah. An absolute creature. Now, although I critique the puns spat out by Doc, mm-hmm. Dr. Chanel also has puns. Yeah. However, I like them way more yeah. because he's such an epic villain. I yeah. mean, when we describe how this guy looks, oh, the... attached to his head, yeah. floating along, he's got the snake things that come from his hands, the wires that are ripping really through his face. Mm. Um, really this is, good. to me, this is top above Angelique. Yeah. Like, yeah. Dr. Chenard is one of easily, the, probably the second to me, yeah. most iconic Hellraiser villain. Mm. It's weird to say he's been, he's been held, but he's also in control of his, there's like double layers to yep. him. It's really weird and, and it kind of goes with the whole pleasure and pain thing because he looks a bit phallic, doesn't it, the way he's being kind of like... True, true. So, yeah, he's definitely kind of top of the list. Oh, he's top of the list, yeah. absolutely. Back to a, an original character that would pop up in the second film as well, but played by a different actress. It is female Cenobite. Mm. So that's all she's given. She's a bald-headed woman who has her throat exposed, um, ripped open mm. there. She actually talks. Mm. She's got a very feminine voice as well, which mm. is kind of cool. You know, she's a, like some different actress played it in Hellraiser 2. Yeah. Uh, but she also died there. And that was the end of her as a character. Thoughts on this one? I like her. I like how she looks. Yeah, I like her. Because mm. I say it's, it's just a whole, it's, it's bleak, but she's got a feminine quality to, feminine quality to her. Um, having just I think it even it's even more what's the word disturbing when it's just one part so like the throat or like with Angelique like the head so the rest of them looks fairly normal but they're just they're just yeah messed up looking I think it was cool for them to throw in a female Cenobite as well in the original movie to show that the whole Cenobite thing was sexless yeah it was man and woman it didn't matter yeah in that sense I'm happy enough because I think she's quite iconic I think mm. she really sticks in the mind I'm happy enough to put her on pleasure by low chatterer definitely yeah so we've got top league. So top, top leagues of these yeah. guys, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, top league, exactly yeah. that. Right, now we get into a couple that are so forgettable, you won't even mm. be remembered if you ever saw them. This one surprised me that it even existed. Mm. Do you know there's a female chatter in one of the movies? Oh. Yeah, female chatterer. You can see in the picture there. Yeah. A female chatterer. Mm. What, fi- I'm trying to what picture film, it. right? Yeah. Yeah, that's a thing and a half, isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What, the newer ones? Uh, probably, well, yeah. obviously, yeah. Certainly yeah. not, certainly not in uh, the first three or Bloodline because they're the ones yeah. I know the well or Judgment um, so for me like this I think it might be the one with oh, see now I was about to go yeah, it might be this one I don't think it is yeah. actually might, might be dead might be dead I'm not sure to me this is uh, yeah. uh, so, it's so forgettable the fact that we don't even know what no. film this one appears in Pain yeah yep. Yeah. but it is a female chatterer it's the top of Pain yep Little Sister <laughs> there's the blank. image <laughs> little sister how is that I would not look at that like if you show to people looks like it belongs in Pan's Labyrinth yes and if you show someone a picture and go oh what for, what, what series of films like if you're not you might have just seen how go, oh I think that's from Hellraiser because of the colouration and you know what they look like that no yeah it's no it's all... <laughs> I think it's one that he sees. The cop sees in his apartment when he's having sex with his neighbour or dreams and he wakes up and she's dead. Uh, yeah. I think that's where she yeah. appears. Mm. <sighs> the, it, the fact that I'm having such memory problems over this specific Cenobite compared to how we've talked about some of the others, it's got me pain as well. Yeah. And I might put this one bottom, bottom of pain. Of pain because it's, not, it's so forgettable. And there's no... Re- like, at least the rest had some sort of... Nod, Recollection, yeah. Of that, yeah. The first of the pinheads. We are going to Pinhead Judgment. The mm-hmm. pinhead that was in the latest Hellraiser Judgment. I cannot remember the actor that played him, unfortunately. Yeah, same. Uh, however, this is about to be controversial. I like this guy. Yeah, I liked him. I like this version of Pinhead. Mm. I like this monk religious take on it. 
uh, that this film did. I, we had positive things to yeah. say about this movie. His voice, his voice was. I liked. I liked the outfit yeah. look, the difference with the cloak and it done up to the neck. neck. It was obviously different while yeah. clearly being pinhead. Yeah, I, said, I liked. His, I liked his voice. The fact that his voice was had nod to um, Doug, Bradley. Doug Bradley, but it wasn't kind of trying to be hammy or copying it thing for thing, like trope for trope. So yeah, I really liked it. And yeah, it looked, the pins actually looked like they were impaled. Yeah, I really, I thought it was. I really cool. liked it as well, which brings us yeah. to a difficult point. Where do we put mm -hmm. him? Mm. I think pleasure. Yeah. Because he's obviously. He gave he's, us pleasure. Yeah. Bottom of pleasure. Yeah. Yep, yeah, he gave us pleasure. Yeah, and he's a version of another character of another person's take on it. Yeah, so, I think yeah, it was so unique. You never go, yeah. And then. Not so unique. <laughs> it's Blowjob Lips himself. <laughs> Hellraiser Revelations. The version of Pinhead we have there. Mm -hmm. Again, can't remember the actor. Uh, I also I did find out, however, just to add more credence to how wanky this version is. In our, when I was doing the uh, study and the work for our talk through of the Hellraiser mm -hmm. franchise, they in depth. I discovered that not only was he, he they used a different actor for the voice. What? It's two actors. One for a voice. One for the man. So, so work for such a particularly oh. as the voice is shit anyway. Yeah. So like, he looks terrible. This is an awful, awful. This is a, this is iconic for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. Everybody remembers this guy because of how stupid he looked, yeah. how crap the makeup was, how he lacked the gravitas or intensity that Doug Bradley brought, and he did have the difficult part of like being the first guy yeah. to have a go. Yeah. Aside from Doug Bradley, but the look they just chose the wrong guy. Yeah. And I joked about blowjob lips, but ultimately everyone remembers one thing about this guy and his full fat lips. Yeah, he needs to have thin lips. Which really, really thin, fucking looked yeah. stupid with the makeup as well. They went too heavy on the pale, mm. but then left his lips looking quite lively yeah. and alive. So they really stood out on his face. Yeah, he should have powdered that all down. And then, yeah, kind of. But then so it's like that whole, the whole mess of have casting him just kind of shows up the... And it's a terrible the movie. Yeah, just a mess some of these films become and like the fact that they cast him and go, yeah, he'll do. Because obviously at that point, they're like scrabbling for scripts and all sorts. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm happy to put him in. Is it, it bottom of, is that it? Yeah. Because it is a version of Pinhead and that's always something. It's mm. not worth paying because at least we, we will remember this guy. Yeah. I feel bad for the guy. Yeah, 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 there was that. <laughs> And then we come to the man himself. Yeah. He is here. It is, of course, Doug Bradley mm. as Pinhead. Is there a more iconic... Well, if you ever see a T-shirt or poster that houses the iconic figures of horror, you'll have your Jason Voorhees. You'll have your um, uh, Freddy Kruegers. You'll mm. have your leather faces. And you will yeah. also have mm. Pinhead from yeah. the Hellraiser series. He is iconic. Mm. Doug Bradley made the role. His voice, his po pose, his power... Mm. He was a small guy, thin, but you completely got mm. the power that stood behind yeah. him. When he spoke, you listen. Yeah. It's top. Definitely. It's top. Yeah. It is, it's above yeah. Chenard. It's, there's no... It was never any question. Yeah. And he, all the rest of these are his groupies anyway. So. <laughs> his groupies, yeah. Yeah. Piston Head, a.k.a. J.P. Monroe from Hellraiser 3. J.P. is obviously the oh, club owner. Yeah that uh, gets the piston jammed in his head and later on becomes a Cenobite. The problem I always had with him what, as a Cenobite was I didn't I didn't really realise it was JP because he looks so fucking different. Mm. He looks like a zombie. If you look at that picture, he looks like... Do you know what it reminds me of? If you've seen, if you've seen Pet Cemetery 2 um, and the actor... Oh, uh, the one that... The, the, the student that gets killed. No, it's no, the famous it's actor from Shawshank and does the voice of uh, Krusty Krabs and... What's his name? Oh, I can't oh, remember his name. Oh, what's his name? Do you know what I mean? He, yeah. He's in Pet Image too. When he's a zombie, this is what he looks like. Mm. This is what it kind of reminds me of. Mm. And he gets a stupid line as well. But there is something cool about it, which is when you see him, the piston's moving and his head's forced to constantly go yeah. to the piston, which is, which is kind of a nice touch. Yeah, and actually did extra work to make it kind of relate to what he's got. Not just like a prop stuck on his head. It's interactive. Yeah. I'm, I, I don't hate this one. He's yeah. one of the better looking ones from it. I'm happy enough for, to put him in Satisfaction... At the bottom. At the bottom. Yeah. Sounds a good place to go. Okay, tell me which film this guy's from. Stitch. Stitch. Oh, he's <laughs> from the last the last one. The very last one we've It's watched. basically his eyes and mouths and his, his face is stitched up. Yeah. Um, it's a very simple thing. A lot of the stuff in Judgment had a lot mm. of simple things like Bound and all the things like that. So Stitch has that as well, mm. which does lack the imagine imagination. Mm. And I don't think this guy stands out particularly well no. either. So for me, it's, is that it? 
alongside yeah. um, Bound One. Yeah, yeah. Can say the darkness, the dark ahead of him. Elements, yeah, the dark element was there, but just not memorable. Then we go to the bartender, Hellraiser Three, mm. Hell on Earth. The bartender, because guess what? Bartender. Mm. And he died. Now, he looks like shit. His face is just messed up. Yeah. However, his selling point was the fact that he mixed drinks. So this Cenobite mm. has a mixer with him that he makes explosive devices with. No. no I hate this no. movie. I mean, I hate this fucking movie. Yeah. It's so stupid. Yeah. Um, pain. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, uh, um, he's still... Uh, he's... Above the CD guy. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Way, way... B- but above... below the female chatterer. Yeah. Okay, this is a this is this is I didn't actually know the Cenobite's name until I looked it up because mm. this is um what's her name the woman in it damn what's it called the innocent Hellraiser three Hell on Earth mm. uh, Joey's friend she goes back to JP yeah oh. she's the homeless one what is her name Terry Terry, Terry. Yes, there we go yeah. Terry but her, when she becomes a Cenobite she gets the name of the Dreamer mm. and I thought it was kind of cool because that's kind of her head and stuff yeah. like that. So she's been shaved bald. The big thing about her is that she has a she has a cigarette in an exposed part of her throat. Yeah, that's kind of what you notice about her, mm. which I fucking hated. Yeah, that was so stupid well, because she smoked. Yeah, that, it was just like oh, like that, a thing ha- about them. Yeah, having that link, it's just oh, it's just shit. Dumb. Yeah, just yeah. dumb. But it's like yeah. what, what, why? Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, that's it about her. There's mm. nothing special. It's is that it, isn't it? Is yeah. that it? Yeah. Um, bottom of is that it? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, I think we'll I think we'll uh, have um blowjob lips go. um blowjob <laughs> lips pinhead. This is an interesting one. Mm. I would actually never have considered this one a Cenobite, mm. but according to online sources, it kinda is considered. And it's mm. the en- it's called the Engineer, which is a nice touch mm. back to the Hellbound Heart, which is the book Clive Barker, the novella Clive Barker wrote, which obviously Hellraiser was based off mm. in a grander scheme of things. And the engineer pops up in Hellraiser 2 mm. as a monster inside the labyrinth. Sort of oh, yeah, yeah. crawling kind of thing like yeah. that. Uh, quite memorable for that. Yeah. You obviously not for you. I can I can remember it. Okay. Yeah, not as well as others because again I, I go for the coloration, so I'm more about like the ones that are like pure white. But obviously there are variations on it. Um, I like the fact they kind of went for something a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Something that um, might actually exist in that whole world. Yeah, because that because there is different there's different leagues of people. These, yep. these are Cenobites. They there's different like yeah different like orders. The, yeah. Exactly like that. The, the Premier League. So I'd put him at satisfaction, bottom of satisfaction after JP? Um, above JP. Above the dog? No. Above JP, blow the dog. Okay, I'll go with that. It's in the bar once. Yeah. The Siam- Siamese twins. Oh, I like them. Uh, so this is from Bloodline. This is the two security mm. guard brothers that are squeezed together. Mm. Uh, I really like the effect of them being put together. The Because yeah. ro- it's really quite gory. It shows the whole machinery and the mm. roller that then starts spinning really their right. faces together. Yeah. I don't love the end result, though. I think it looks a bit cheap, which is, you know, the whole face mm. tied together and you've got the whole body tied together and you've got that slit in the middle. Like, don't love that, though. I like no. the effect of them being put together, not the end result. It's a shame, because I would like to have it to look better, but I like the idea of having, like, all people meshed together. I think it belongs in Satisfaction, because it's quite a yeah. memorable one. I think above Bound. That high, above yeah. Bound 2? Yeah, above Bound 2. Because in the world realms, it's a Cenobite. That, okay. I think that's quite cenobite Yeah. if that's the right word. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> uh, what we got next? The Surgeon. The Surgeon. Mm-hmm. Why am I trying to picture him? He's there. Yeah, he's dark. Um, yeah, it's just a gory face. There's nothing yeah, really yeah. special about this one at all. In fact, if you ask me to tell you what film it was in, I'm already struggling. I'm like, I'm not sure what film this guy belongs in. No. So that's a problem in itself. I think that automatically puts it in pain, right? Mm-hmm, definitely. Uh, where do we put them? We've got female Cenobite. We've got bartender Cenobites. We've got CD Cenobite. It's got to be above CD one. I, I'd put it above bartender, because bar- yeah. te- fuck bartender. Yeah. The Wire Twins. So these are the two female mm. sexualized ones that we see, actually. I think they were more than one movie. Yeah. But they pop up in one particular. It might be... Oh, Dead, was it? No, no, it wasn't Dead. It was um, again one where the, I think there's one with a cop cop because he was uh, about sex oh, and stuff yeah, like that. Oh, he was. Yeah, he was like he was all he was a bit of a sex addict, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. and he's got like wires twisted through their eyes and that side of their head. And they kind of have a they are, they're having a bit of, they've got a bit of a lesbian vibe thing going on yeah. with them. Um, I think they kind of stand out as something mm. quite a bit different because their faces are quite torn and enlarged as well. It looks a yeah. bit like um, Beetlejuice kind of oh, thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So on that front, satisfaction, mm. yeah. yeah. 
Um, above JP. Yeah. I feel. Yeah. Yeah. Which brings us to the last one, and uh, what I call younger Pinhead. Mm. Uh, this is from. God, not Hell World. What's the one with the two boys that go on a trip to Mexico? Oh, Mexico. That's um, one of the newer ones, wasn't Yeah, one it? of the newer ones. Uh, I think it's Blowjob Lips. It's Pinhead. Um, yeah. It, it, oh, it's Revelations, isn't it? Revelations, It yeah. is Revelations. Yeah. Of course it is. It is Revelations. Well done. Mm. So this is one of the kids who's being, I, I don't groomed as a young Pinhead. Yeah. He's basically mm. got the same, like his skin was torn off and ripped and he's had nails, different kind of nails as well. Like, mm. I like to see the nails go. The in. nails looked better, mm. funny enough, than they did it on the Pinhead. Mm. These look more jagged and sharp mm. and um old and like he's basically collecting bits of flesh to put into yeah. each square which i thought was a nice touch crafty yeah i think it's a nice touch he stands out to me more than blow job, blow job lips does yeah because the patchwork was pretty cool yeah the patchwork thing looks better because mm, in some some of the films the transformation from getting skin to being human again was like whoop, oh look i'm back oh again. don't let's not talk about that <laughs> the second film with that yeah. julio and stuff oh, yeah yeah, yeah. Skin swap, yeah. I'm I'm happy for this guy to go into satisfying satisfaction. Mm. I'm happy yeah. enough for him to go into the top. Yeah. Because I think we remember him. I think above I think above Butterball. I think top of satisfaction yeah. as well. Yeah. Because he's got his end of bite theme, but it's also you can't see a bit of progression from how you would get from being I think it's just a little bit different so, a take yeah. on the pinhead thing, really, yeah. yeah. So the, yeah, there's our ranking and uh let's quickly fire through them yeah. if I can remember what their names are. Stop That's me. Little Sister, Camera Head, Cenobite, C D Cenobite. <laughs> Uh, bartender Cenobite the surgeon and female chatter are all in pain most of them went in there because we either couldn't remember what film they were in they were so mm. unrememberable there was that problem or because they were just shit yeah. in the case of bartender CD and fucking camera head yeah. is that it we have Terry the dreamer mm -hmm. we have blowjob lips pinhead <laughs> <laughs> the chatter yeah. torso yeah. we have um, bound one yeah. and we have stitches a mix, basically. Yeah. Nothing special here, but some stand out more for the visual, even yeah. though we can't, some of them can't quite remember what they were even in. Yeah. Satisfying. We have JP's version, which is Piston Head. We mm -hmm. have the Siamese twins. The Wire Twins, sorry. Excuse me. The Wire Twins. We have the Engineer. We have the Beast of the Chatterer. Mm -hmm. We have Bound 2. We have the Siamese twins. We have Butterball. And we have Younger Pinhead. Mm -hmm. I think they work. Yeah. And then in Pleasure, we have Pinhead from Judgment. We have the female Cenobite and we have the original Chatterer yeah. version. Yep. And then we only put three in such sites and we put, you know what? I'm going to make a change here. Okay. I, th I was thinking you was going to. I think Angelique goes top of pleasure out of the top two. Okay. I think the top two should be held for just those two. Don't you agree? Yeah. Like, it's not... Yeah, put, yeah. we'll put an Angelique and Pleasure alongside Chatterer, Female and Judgment. Yeah, when she's similar to the other one. Exactly. She's exposed. But not only that as well, she's only in one movie where, and she doesn't leave that mark, where Shannard is in one movie, yeah. leaves a mark and Pinhead. Like that's, that makes sense. Such sites, the top ranking mm. is just those two. And I think as well with Dr. Shannard, you see the transformation. True. And that kind of makes the end outcome a lot more, like, a lot more pleasurable. I think it should also be noted why he belongs there as well, is he kills mm. Pinhead. He yeah. kills mm. all the Cenobites. That's his power. Yeah. So powerful is he. Yeah. yeah. And of course, Doug Bradley, top yeah. of the bunch as Pinhead. How would you have ranked him? Let us know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. You can check us out on GBHBell.com as well as on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Tumblr. Go to Patreon to help us out over there. That's patreon.com forward slash GBHBL as well as Big Cartel where you can find some of our merchandise. We have a podcast running on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts. And of course, if you like this video, do us a favour, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Games, horror and heavy metal, what else is life for?